Hello everybody, my name is Pravis, and welcome to Going Medieval! This is a new colony builder survival game that went into early access at the beginning of the month, and is being compared repeatedly to games like RimWorld and Dwarf Fortress. And I gotta say, after playing for a couple of hours, I can totally see why. This game is clearly very heavily inspired by both. So if you enjoy games like RimWorld, you might enjoy Going Medieval, although obviously it has a very different theme. Now, like I said, this game is in early access, so there's quite a bit more that needs to be added to the game over the next few months, but even in its current state, it's enjoying very positive reviews on Steam, and I thought it'd be fun to try out a series this game, and maybe just have a bit of fun breaking up the pace. You know, something new. We'll be playing with a standard game today. There's also Peaceful and Survival. Basically, it just dictates how many raids you are going to be facing. Peaceful, none at all. Survival, all the time. Standard splits the difference, and I think that's good enough for me. We have a couple of different starting conditions we can work with. A New Life is uh, going to start you off with three citizens and then a bunch of different resources, or a Lone Wolf with only one. I'll go ahead and play with uh, A New Life and get three, because I think that unlocks more features for us a little bit faster. Now, as far as where we're going to be placing our base, we have a couple of different options, right? You randomize a map with the seed, and then you can choose between either a valley, a hillside, or a mountain. Valleys have lots of rich soil and vegetation, but not much in the way of minerals. Mountains have lots of minerals, but not much vegetation. Hillsides split the difference, and I think that's going to be good enough for me. As far as the settlement name, I've already decided on Darby Hill Montisher. Because this game is actually based in medieval England after the Black Death, and we're founding a new settlement. This kind of fits with the theme that I know of for a lot of English uh, towns and cities, but also is long and silly enough that I think it's just it's just going to be good. So Darby Hill Montisher is going to be the name of our settlement. Once you've decided on all of that, now you have to pick all of your starting colonists, and you have to just keep randomizing until you find someone you like. Similar to games like RimWorld, you can see that there are several skills that are relevant to us. So we have animal handling botany, carpentry, construction, culinary, intellectual, marksman, medicine, melee, mining, smithing, speechcraft, and tailoring. On top of that, some skills will have passions, which means these characters will gain experience at a much higher rate. Beyond that, we also should consider their perks. Perks can be good or bad for characters and give them a little bit more interest. A washout, for example, getting wet is going to make her miserable. Churlish, right? Reduced mood. Or we can randomize to someone else. Somnolent right? Just sleeps a lot. A gobbler who eats food really fast. Callous. I have no idea what that does, actually. I guess he just doesn't care about corpses. And a few others that are obviously really good and so on. So all of this is nice. So what is Lord of Misrule? Tricks and buffoonery were midwinter indulgence. He likes to play jokes all year young. Great! A prankster! Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so you can just kind of randomize your characters until you find something that you like. There's also this group skills graphic over here, which takes an aggregate of all your different uh, characters to tell you how good your group is going to be at activities, to make sure you're not missing something important. That's pretty helpful. Beyond that, also, there's one more thing to look at, and that's going to be religious alignment. The way that this works is on the far left, we have devout pagans, oak brethren, and on the far right, we have devout, I guess, Christians, uh, restitutionists in this slightly fictionalized version of England. Uh, so if you're on either extreme, you are devout in a religion, and as you get closer to the center, you're more of a practitioner, just kind of barely phoning it in for your faith. But different characters are going to be putting a much higher um, uh, affinity on religion and need different shrines and stuff. And having uh, pagans and Christians in the same group? I don't know. Maybe it'll lead to some sort of conflict in the future. Haven't tried that yet. Regardless, though, that's one more thing to keep in mind. Okay, and I think this is actually going to be a really good team for us. Not the highest skills across the board, but lots of passions between all of our characters, which means we should be able to learn a lot of relevant skills relatively quickly. All women, though. Just kind of happened out that way. Didn't mean to. I am going to be naming our characters after uh, some of my top-tier patrons, so a big thank you to their support. Iceman, Solbuser, and Drew are going to be our starting crew. Iceman is a Yorkist bowyer, which means we have pretty good skill in carpentry in particular. Also some passions for melee, tailoring, and botany. Not very good at botany, though. A high construction skill is going to be very useful for setting up some of my early buildings. As far as perks, we have Vigorous, good for wood regeneration, and Industrious, just better work speed, and is a Restitutionist, all right? Then Solbuser over here is a Despicable Lorimer, 
with, again, Industrious, just happened to get something like that, and Sunseeker. Likes being outdoors in the sun. A bit of passion in Intellectual, which is going to be great for my research, and for Marksman, which will be helpful for building up some combat skills. Also passionate for mining, very talented at smithing. Not too sure what I'm going to do with that, but all right. Some passion in Botany, which could be useful for some early game farming. And then Drew over here is very good with animals, very good with medicine, and passionate for both of those. Pretty decent cook with some culinary passions, Again, fairly good at farming, and not a whole lot else. Some intellectual skills, we have a backup researcher if necessary. Really not that good at combat, though. This does concern me a little bit. Nonetheless, we'll go with it. Gourmet, so we have a higher appetite, uh, but does consume faster. And churlish, low mood. That's not going to be good. Also pagan, so might be a bit at odds with some of my other characters. But all right, let's go ahead and give that a shot. So we got our three characters in Darby Hill Montessor. At a standard difficulty for a new life in the hillside. Perfect. And here we are in our starting map. Okay, so there's a few things we're going to need kind of early on. Obviously, a few resources, such as some wood for construction projects, some food for consuming. All of those would be good. We do start off with quite a few extra resources over here, which is quite nice. Uh, most of which is currently forbidden so that people don't go moving it around. Not that I am too worried about it. Uh, one thing that we do need to be concerned about is the deterioration of our goods. And they can see that things like cabbages, for example, example, are going to decompose. If they are resting in the soil, all of our goods will start to decompose. If they are in the wrong temperature, certain types of goods are going to decompose. Others prefer to be rubed. You know, let's say rain comes through. You don't want all my linen cloth to get rain through, right? So one thing we're going to go ahead and do just to start us off is set up a quick little stockpile. Kind of like so, where people can dump all their goods, keep them in one place. And we could set up some wooden floors right over here, with the goal of just preventing any deterioration. This should be a really quick construction job for us. Sounds great. We'll also go ahead and uh, chop down a few trees, so we can have a bit more lumber to work with. We'll go ahead and do something like that, I suppose. And maybe harvest some of the hay over here, the tall grass. Any food sources nearby? Not really seeing any. There's some herbs over here, which could be useful. No, there's mushrooms down over here, I suppose. That's nice, but not a lot in the way of food. Okay, so foraging is going to be a little rough for us. Let's take a look at jobs. Again, this should look very familiar to anyone who has played RimWorld. Let's make sure we set up the right good, uh, jobs here. So Iceman is primarily going to be constructing. We should make sure that everyone has bed rest, convalesce if they are injured. Who's our best doctor? That's going to be Drew. That's going to be your number one job. We'll go ahead and do that. As far as growing and stuff, mining, blah, 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 none of this seems that important. Cooking is okay, but we have a better person for that. Uh, smithing, carpentry, sure, if we have to do that, and then not a lot of intellectual skill. Okay, so beyond that, let's also make you into a bit of a hauler. So you're going to haul a lot of goods and then help construct stuff, at least at the beginning of the game. Solbaser is a pretty decent shot. Oh, actually, I forgot. You're a pretty good hunter. We'll make you have that do as well. Uh, Solbaser is okay at hunting, not good at construction. Reasonably okay for the harvesting and planting of various different plants. Not going to worry about any of the... Uh, not going to worry about any of the mining and stuff or the cooking yet. Um, smithing, if you have a job like that, sure. Carpentry, no. Tailoring, blah, blah, blah. Everything else here seems fine. And then for Drew, you definitely need to have some priorities as far as taking care of plants. Not worried about mining or smithing or carpentry or tailoring. Research, however, is also going to be a high priority. So, okay. Between all of this, I think that's good enough for our jobs. We can also set schedules for people to work and to sleep. I'll go ahead and make sure we set at least a handful of work hours so that everyone will be sure to put in at least a good few hours per day. But we could also assign some leisure time or allow people to rest and meet their needs if necessary. There's also a manage screen over here where we control whether people are going to have weapons and stuff. So Iceman, in your case, um, you're really good at marksmanship. You're okay at melee and have a passion for it too. Let's see. Solvacer, we definitely give a ranged weapon to start. Uh, Drew, you're not good at much of anything. And Iceman, do we give you a weapon, like a ranged weapon, or do we give you a melee weapon? I think we give you a one-handed melee weapon and a shield. You can be kind of like my tank, and then Drew is going to be a two-handed melee user. We can also manage headgear, apparel, armor, and our food policies and stimulants if we had, like, let's say, some ale and other such stuff. We'll worry about research and such later. For now, let's just go ahead and construct all this, make sure we start gathering up some useful plants. I do want to construct a very, very basic base just to get us going, so we can place down, let's say, some wooden walls right along over here. Rotate this around and make sure you place 
kind of like this. I'll probably repurpose this into a barn later, but for now, this will be where we're going to place down some beds and give people a place to stay. So let's place down a door right in the middle over there as well. Okay, now that we have that set up, let's go for a couple of quick little production buildings. We could have a butchering table, which is good for chopping up animal carcasses to get some meat and some leather. We also will need to get ourselves a campfire with which we can start cooking some early meals. And there's also going to be a basic research table so that we can uh, unlock the research tree, which is going to be very important for us early on. I'm going to go ahead and place that in a totally separate structure. So let's go ahead and build out something kind of small over here. This is eventually going to be kind of like a library for me, but I'll show you what rooms will do in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and start constructing a new place for research. Let's also go ahead and place the butchering table for now over here. Actually, we're not going to do any hunting quite yet. We can hold off on that for the moment. There we go. We have that built up. So now we have unlocked the research panel. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, research works differently from games like RimWorld. Previously in a game like RimWorld, for example, you would select what technology you want, and then your researcher goes and works exclusively on that technology until it is done. Uh, in this game instead, though, we're going to be compiling chronicles. These are simple tales and facts laid down on a skin. Books, effectively. And this is a stackable, storable resource that we can use to unlock technology. So let's take a look at architecture. I have 25 chronicles right now. At the cost of 15, we can instantly unlock architecture, which gets us the wooden beam. So we'll go ahead and unlock that. Now we only have 10 left. We would have to get more chronicles if we want to unlock some more technology. So for example, let's get over here to the, excuse me, basic research table. Now we have to queue up a job. In this case, I want to get Chronicles and we can do this pretty much forever. So workers, if they are assigned to doing research, will come over here and start generating Chronicles and toss them into the pile. And a good thing about this is it makes research like a bit more um, flexible. If we are storing up lots of Chronicles and decide, you know, I was planning on getting smelting, but all of a sudden I feel like I need to get agriculture instead. Well, we haven't committed a lot of our time into one technology. It lets us flip-flop in between decisions based on our actual needs. So that could be kind of helpful for me. I am going to place down a quick little stockpile zone right over here, let's say in this corner, and this is specifically going to be for books right here. That way, if we do compile Chronicles, we just quickly drop them off and get right back to work. No problem at all. Okay, so with that taken care of, let's also do the same thing here with our meals. I'm going to do this until we have, let's say, 12 meals. So whoever's going to be cooking can take some different goods and start creating stew or roasted meat or whatever we have available. Now I'm going to start moving on to a slightly more ambitious project. I want to create a larger multi-level structure. And the idea behind this is this is going to be kind of like my main mess hall plus a kitchen area over here. Right? And then upstairs, I'm going to have proper individual bedrooms for each of our colony members. So we can get rid of these uh, shared bedrooms and instead make this into... Let's say a storage warehouse or something. So we're going to have to place down a whole bunch of walls to start us off. No problem. You can see that we are building up some stairs. Now that this is built, we actually would be able to start laying out, let's say, some floors and stuff. Not going to worry about that right this second. At least until we can get the ground floor taken care of. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and move up a quick floor. So structural integrity does matter in this game. Uh, whenever you do construct, let's say, a wall or something that's stable, you can build a little bit off of it before it is then going to collapse. So let's say a wall right here. I can build out a little bit like this, but if I build like this, for example, it stops after four here because you can expect that it is going to then fall apart, right? You can do the same thing here with flooring, but one other way to increase the range and the structural integrity would be to place down some wooden beams. Now this doesn't look like it does much of anything yet, but if you actually place it up against, let's say, a wall, like uh, this for example, we would be able to see that some uh, beams kind of run between these areas and that kind of provides some of the base structure. So let's say I need a beam right there and I actually know that I do. I'll also go ahead and place down a beam right over there and that provides a good bit of structural integrity in the middle areas of this open ceiling. Making some good progress along here. Let's go to research and see if we can unlock something else. Could go for furniture, which will get us some better beds, and I obviously do want that. But agriculture is going to be more important for me since right now we already know that food is going to be a little bit in shorter supply, at least to start. So, we had placed down some crop fields. Now, I think that there's no such thing as soil fertility, or if there is, I haven't found any evidence of that yet. So, I think we can place this almost anywhere. There are some exceptions. If you look at the bottom left over here, you can see that wherever my mouse is hovering, we can see what kind of tile we're looking at. In this case, grass over here, soil, right? Then there's rocky soil. Pretty sure you can't place down any farms over here. You can also use this to find other deposits of minerals. Let's say lime 
limestone over here, for example. I think that there's also such things as coal and salt and probably a few more things. I don't really see a good example of any of that right now. Maybe we have to go mining for that later. Here's something, clay. That could be useful if you want to make some bricks. You get the idea, right? Okay, most of the walls are basically done. Let's go ahead and start laying out some floor, kind of like this, I'm thinking. And here's kind of a weird quirk of the game. Solbacer over here is actually building something directly above her. I don't know how she's physically able to do that, but you can sometimes. They don't always go up the next layer in order to actually construct some projects. So Iceman is, so what's the difference? I don't know. Okay, most of the upstairs is taken care of. Let's go ahead and start placing some roofs. Now, roofs uh, actually do need to have anchor points at any of their corners. You see the little white circles uh, on the edges as I'm placing these? They need some sort of a support directly under them to place a roof. That's one of the reasons I wanted to have this beam right over here in this exposed area. So if I want to, you can see I can rotate like this and boom, this beam functions as the anchor point for the rest of the roofs. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then up over here, um, we can do something kind of similar if I were to do a quick little beam right there, right? So we'll have some roofs that will go this way and then some that will rotate around this way. There we go. Oh, let's actually place down some of those farms. I talked about it and I never actually did anything with it. So we have different kinds of um, fields over here. We have cabbage fields, flax fields, carrots, beets, barley, herbs, red currant shrubs, tall grass, and birch trees. You can kind of see what the grow time and maximum yield should be. This is actually a little confusing to me and I don't fully understand it. So take a look at the cabbages, for example. Grow time 17 days, but maximum yield in five days? So what is that supposed to mean? Like you can plant the cabbage and it stays alive for 17 days, but you can harvest it within five? I don't know. Five seems to be the correct number. If I place this down, it only takes five days for the cabbages to grow and then we harvest them. So I'm not sure where the 17 days comes in, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and place down a couple of small fields, let's say of the cabbages and then maybe some for the carrots. And there are different yield times and so on. You can see how much food you get per day. There's probably a more efficient crop, but for now I'll go for some food diversity. Starting to run a bit low on food and people currently don't have any sort of leisure activity. We'll fix that in just a moment. Some more research is available. Okay, let's go ahead and work on furniture next so I have better beds available for us. Which means now if I come over here to the bedrooms that we did construct, we can place down some wooden hay be beds and this will get people a much better sleep at night. So we'll go ahead and do this. Oh, okay, it's been a few days in the game and now we have an event, a barbarian snack. Some said tales of the progeny eating people were poppycock, but they crossed themselves when Robert appeared, having escaped as the brutes were sharpening their knives. If cannibals came looking for their lunch, would you keep Robert off the menu? So we can have a new citizen. Um, I can either just get rid of them or we can bring them in. What skills do you have? Um, you are honestly not very good. Um, hmm, okay. Yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not a great character, and I'm not sure you're really worth bringing on. Some combat skills, some medicine, yeah, but animal handling and skills and stuff I don't need. Nope, I think we go ahead and just slam the door. If I'm gonna take on some new citizens, they need to be, they actually be, like, good. Uh, this does, of course, create a mood penalty for everybody, but I don't want to deal with three barbarians coming on my doorstep this early on in the game. I don't really have much in the way of defense. So it just doesn't seem like a very, very smart idea to me. Now, something we haven't talked about so far are bedrooms. So if we take a look up over here, you can see in this, um, this room over here, it is listed as a bedroom. But if we were to go down a couple stories over here, you know, this area, it would be considered to be a spare room. Over here, we have a shared bedroom, right? The game does automatically assign to certain types of rooms. And that doesn't seem very important until you realize they give you certain boosts. So let's take a look at this. This is an overlay of rooms. So up here, we can see that we have bedrooms. By having this with a hay, or a, a hay bed or a sleeping spot, only one and no others, whoever sleeps here enjoys the peace and quiet of their own quarters. Whereas a shared bedroom, you only get a small positive modifier. Okay, well that seems fine. But let's take a look at some other ones. The kitchen. If we have a stove, some pottery shelves, and some butchering tables, all of those workstations will work faster. That could be useful. What about a library? Have the basic research table plus a couple of wall bookshelves, we get a speed bonus for writing books, right? So laying out your base with the intention of setting aside some good rooms for specific production uh, needs is apparently a good way to actually boost yourself, at least by, I don't know, 
5, 10, 20%. I have actually no idea how much production boost it is, but anything is good. Let's take a look at Leisure. This is something I haven't really messed with yet, and we're going to need it pretty soon. Backgammon tables are a way for us to get some entertainment for our folks, so I'll go ahead and place one down over here. It's actually, I think, the only form of play leisure that exists in the game right now. There will probably be more at some points in the future. We also see Restitutionist Shrines, which would be good for the Restitutionists to worship and pray. And also the Oak Brethren Shrines. Now, I'm sorry, looking at this little icon over here, you tell me that doesn't look like a Minecraft villager. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. I'm just saying. Hmm, this rain is going to be a bit unpleasant. It's going to make a lot of my stuff deteriorate outside. All the more reason I'd like to clear out this warehouse area, right? Get rid of these beds, let everyone go to their proper bedrooms, and turn this into some better storage spots. It'll be good for my uh, armor, for my clothing, and for whatever the heck else we got. I just realized something. Is Drew naked? I mean, Drew's obviously wearing some basic undergarments. This, this, is, this is a very fi family-friendly game, but... If you take a look at inventory, it looks like the clothes did actually deteriorate, so uh, we're going to need to get some tailoring going kind of soon. I could go for like some brewing technology and stuff, but maybe it would be better to save up for some tailoring. Let us start actually fabricating our own clothes. I've also set up a nice little butchering table in what I think will eventually become my kitchen. Let's make sure we set up a job so you can do that pretty much forever if we have a carcass. Carcasses can be stored nearby, and then foodstuffs can be stuffed over here, right? And then everything else gets over here. We have loads of sticks. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this many sticks, if I'm being honest. Sticks don't seem that useful to me. Let's go ahead and place down one of those sewing stations I was talking about just a little bit. If we can place a couple of tool racks in here at some point, we'll also turn this into a workstation, which will make this whole thing work a little bit faster. But we don't have access to those yet, so a sewing station is going to have to do. Okay, now that that's built, what kind of products do we think we want? Winter clothes, summer clothes, we need clothing fabric. I do have at least some of that. So we'll go ahead and build up some summer clothes so that Drew is not naked anymore. Caps, yeah, that could be kind of fun to have. Wide straw hats if we have lots of hay. Might be worth crafting like three of these to keep people's uh, heads safe during the summer sun. And then we could just dismantle items for cloth, but I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. Okay, yeah, no, this could be kind of cool. Um... Who do we have for tailoring? Well, it looks like there's some passion going on here for Iceman. So once Iceman is done gathering up materials and bringing them back, uh, maybe just start crafting some clothes. There we go, our first set of clothes. Drew now gets to wear a nice looking dress or smock or whatever you want to call it. That's perfectly fine. Look at all the cabbages! Oh goody, the cabbages are all coming to fruition. And yeah, you can see down here, five days for the maximum yield. So again, I don't know where the 17 comes from. It's got to be something to do with how long you can just leave it there. Carrots should be coming uh, of age as well pretty soon. Now we're about to have a nice big influx of food. Big issue I'm running into right now is I'm not sure that we actually can have quite enough uh, hauling people right now. Like It seems like our stockpiles are not getting filled up as fast as I need them to be. Um, we may need to have more like consistent hauling jobs. Maybe taking on one other character who's primarily going to be hauling is not a bad idea. Or maybe a combat-based character. If we have an opportunity to bring on a fifth person soon, I think I will probably do that. Or a fourth person, sorry. In the meantime, though, the food stores are now filling up. We have a good amount of storage. We have rooms for everyone with some pretty large and imposing structures. All looking fantastic down over here. Yeah, this seems like a pretty decent start for us. We just need more people. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. But, we, of course, we will be coming back with more in the future. So, thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed and are looking forward to more of this series. If so, then I would humbly ask that you hit that like button. It really does help. Of course, leave a comment and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notify bell. And I will see you guys next time. <laughs>